10th December is celebrated as International Human Rights Day because it was on that day that the Universal Declaration of Human Rights was passed by the General Assembly of the United, uh, United Nations in Paris. It was passed after the world had seen two world wars in which countries all over the world, people all over the world had taken part and people had died. At millions of people had died. So yes, we should celebrate it as a milestone in human history when the countries came together and tried to evolve a standard of behavior of human rights which would uh, help us talk to each other, negotiate, have a political process, and not settle it with wars. So in so far as it was a historical milestone, we celebrate it and we should remember it. However, it has now become a meaningless ritual. It has just become a meaningless ritual. And why do I say it? Because now, Human rights has been weaponized. Human rights is used to justify military intervention. In the terminology of the USA and the Western countries, they do not like to use the word war, but they use military intervention. They even go so far as to say that counterinsurgency in accordance with human rights, humanitarian intervention in accordance with human rights, they go to the extent of saying drone strikes should be in accordance with human rights. So in such a situation, it is hypocrisy to think that we should celebrate Human Rights Day and not remember how far we have come from the original purpose of human rights. Secondly, even at the time when the, human, when the declaration was passed, it was not universal. Why was it not universal? It was opposed. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights was opposed by Saudi Arabia because they did not accept the universality of those human rights. Secondly, it was opposed by, apartheid, uh, by South Africa, which was an apartheid, and they said that human beings cannot be equal, that blacks are uh, inferior and so are brown. So there was that reason. Third reason was that the Soviet Union and Eastern Bloc, which is the country supporting Soviet Union, also blocked it, but for a totally different reason. They said these human rights are only for individuals. It's not for collective rights. And they only give political human rights. They do not give economic, uh, economic rights. So there was a controversy on the universality of human rights. And today, human rights is divided between people of different countries, on different ethnicities, on race. And so you have an African human rights declaration. You have a declaration by the Gulf countries, which is an Islamic declaration of human rights. And so the idea of universality, I think, was a very revolutionary idea. but that is being challenged every day. So we should remember Human Rights Day for its historical milestone, and we should then really go into, we should remember it and analyze it and see how far we can, where we can take it for the future. So yeah. the slogan of women's rights or human rights, to the best of my knowledge, came from the West. Uh, Charlotte Bunch and a whole lot of American feminists raised it and made it as the main theme in the Beijing conference in 1995. I understand from where it was coming because they felt that human rights movement was very strong and they wanted to assert that women's rights are also human, human rights and part of that universality. However, I was very uncomfortable with the slogan from that time onwards because when we talk about women's rights, they are special, they are not a general right because of the specific position of women in patriarchal society. So human rights and uh, human rights declaration, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights does not question patriarchy, does not problematize patriarchy 
and it only talks of in fact it didn't originally even talk about gender equality therefore a groups of people and communities of people need to be protected especially for instance maybe religious minorities maybe ethnic minorities minorities of various kinds people of disability senior citizens so these kinds of people or different communities require a specific protection so therefore i would say that yes women's rights are human rights but human rights itself does not recognize patriarchy as a violation of human rights so again i would say in this context again that we need to develop and evolve a universal human rights which recognizes patriarchy as a human rights violation also women are not oppressed by themselves individually only women are always oppressed within communities whether it's a religious community or family and in that context it the all communities everywhere are patriarchal so i hope that at this point i would say that human rights and women's rights are two separate issues till the time that human rights can have a truly universal definition but i think the biggest danger is that today human rights movement and human rights discourse have been depoliticized it's a whole generation of people who have been told that there are no alternatives or tina syndrome that people who see no vision because every alternate vision that could have been a socialist vision a communist vision feminist vision all alternative visions have been devalued destroyed and we have an utterly depoliticized a uh, society of uh, depoliticized civil society therefore i think on this day i would like to request people to go back and read the history of these things history departments are being closed down in in university so we are deprived of our own history we are deprived of our own culture and and in this state of uh, of cap global capitalism we are being we third world countries are not only recolonized our imagination is decolonized so if we, if our imagination is colonized we need to decolonize our imagination and how do we do that if we have if we have to recover the human rights discourse make it universal have conversations on it and to make it truly universal and inclusive and for that we need to have very painful conversations in this country because today every part of our country is falling apart there are ethnic conflicts there are religious conflicts there are women are raped and killed and we do we some of us which is mostly majority community feel oh it's you know these things happen in iraq or afghanistan or somewhere they don't happen here but they happen right here and then if 15 people are killed in nagaland or oh, that's really far away we don't really you know we don't identify but people are being killed in delhi people, migrant workers were starving to death in covid in during covid and we didn't react so we have become a society who is utterly dehumanized is not capable of having introspection and therefore this message would be to all of us that we really need to think of what is the future for this country and for us as human beings if we cannot react to other people's suffering our own fellow citizens suffering let it on have expressing international solidarity uh, for human rights violations and especially to the refugee community in in india so i think it's a time for introspection for thinking for reading and having very difficult conversations across the country